I want the world to know that uh, Nande Kalo is not facing any persecution. Nande Kalo is facing persecution. Persecution in the sense that since the history of law in Nigeria, it's, it's well established that Nande Kalo is the only defendant in the history of law in Nigeria that does not have adequate time and the facility as provided by section 36 of the constitution which gave an accused person a right to have adequate time and facility to defend himself. What do I mean? You recall that uh, some time ago as his lawyer when I went to have a discussion with him at the DSSS. My right was violated, I was intimidated, I was stripped to half naked there in DSSS. I rushed back to the Federal High Court and lay my complaint through originating processes. And after looking at all that happened, the court said <coughs> yes, none the Carlos lawyer was rights was violated granted all my reliefs and directed the DSSS to apologize to us and stop intimidating us and to pay me 5 million naira. That particular judgment was not appealed against. That particular judgment is still subsisting and valid. Now, we took the same application to the same Federal High Court stating the reasons why Nande Kahlo should be taken away from DSSS. DSSS is a prosecution. You don't need to have a law degree for you to know that you can never be a judge in your own case. The principle of Nemo Judas Akasasua, you can never be a judge in your own case. Anytime we, try, we went to um, um, DSSS to have a, uh, a discussion with our client Nande Kalo, the DSSS will set up gadgets, send the officials to come and monitor what we are saying. Right from the gate, they will search us. Whatever documents that I'm, the confidential documents that I'm, I'm going with to discuss with my client, they will collect it, take it to the legal department. The legal department will read it, photocopy it, before they will hand it over to us. Whatever um, 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 uh, minutes I collected from one and the color, as I'm coming out, they will collect it from me and snap it. So in other words, there is no defense. And we have pleaded time without number that, please, if you don't want to release him on bail, send him to, uh, to um, uh, Kujia Correctional Center. These are the people that we are trained on how to keep a suspect that is facing trial. And we call them awaiting trial suspects. If you go there, they apply professionalism. They will give you all the necessary materials, provide a secluded place for you to have a discussion with your client, even those that have been accused of treasonable felony, those that have been accused of uh, terrorism, they never treated them like this. Not to talk about a freedom fighter, somebody that is fighting a just cause. Now, we approach the same Federal High Court. The same Federal High Court refused to hear our application. I am talking about Honorable Justice Minta Nyako. Several applications have been made. In fact, one of them he said that I'm not going to hear what happened in the other court. He said it. Now, on the last adjoined date, we are crying. Look at our predicament. Somebody that is going to face the trial, we're about to commence trial in line with the Supreme Court judgment. Can you direct this people? Can you direct that and the college should be transferred to Bunye prison? He refused. She refused. Yeah, Only, she refused. Only to tell us that there is no security in Kujie prison. Quoting the judge, you pressmen were there on that day. Now, you are now telling us that if Nande Kalu is convicted for whatever charge you have, is he going to serve the prison term at DSSS? The answer is no. Now, the, what it means is that the captain Nande Kalu there so that Nande Kalu will not have a very fortified um, defense. This thing must, you must let the world know because I saw. Um, um, one person, though I don't want to call him a journalist because I know those who are journalists, he wrote in social media that Nandekalo don't want to face trial. These are our challenges. 
that one is on on uh, that remember that the supreme court also said after admonishing the uh, the judge i don't want to use the word after insulting the judge i don't want to use it i want to i prefer to use the word after admonishing the judge say that the judge ought not have revoked his bail and in the first instance in other words impliedly supreme court has reinstated that bell and ask the court to make the pronouncement. But that is where I have an issue. Because we don't destroy our jurisprudence because of Nandekalo. Without Nandekalo, there must be Nigeria. With or without Nandekalo. So we don't whatever thing that we are stating today is going to be a precedent. Now the question there is that what stops Supreme Court judges from exercising their power under section six that gives them unlimited power to reinstate that bell. They referred us to Federal High Court. Now we went to Federal High Court as a sole procedure to apply for the bill. The bill was rejected. Now we have now made fresh application asking the court to comply with the Supreme Court. Remember the time when I addressed you people, I told you that what happened in that court that day is an act of Federal High Court setting aside the judgment of the Supreme Court. You don't do it in our own judicial uh, jurisprudence. Now, the, we have applied. We brought Two applications now. If either you reinstate that his bail, take him to Kuje prison, or send him to a private um, um, house for for for, for for house arrest. You can take him to Abia State Government House. You can take him to Abia State Liaison Office. You can take him to Imo State Government House. You can take him to Imo State Liaison Office. If you feel that he's even comfortable for you, Mr. Uh, Madam George, please, then you can send him to your house so that you'll be sure what we are talking about. Personally, and I have said it, and I have told him and the call, for the fact that you'll be here, I have not prepared you for this trial, I, Maxwell Opera, will not come to defend you. Because I don't defend people because I want to defend people. I defend people so as to get your own side of the story and advise you accordingly, in line with my, the rules of my profession. I have not heard from Nandekalo. I have not uh, advised him. And I want him to go and uh, defend the uh, first trial. First, first trial for what? So you people should. So what our, if the judge fell to reinstate his bail, send him to Kujay Correctional Center, send him to a private uh, house of, uh, for house, house arrest, house arrest, then we are pulling out. You people should have it. We are not going to, so that, so that, not when we pull out on that day, you say that, that we abandon Nandekal in court. No. Because the question my colleagues, everybody will ask me, when you're having these challenges, why do you still go ahead? It's just like where you are traveling. And they told you that the uh, armed robbers are on the road, kidnappers are on the road. Instead of you to, 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 to withdraw and uh, probably suspend that uh, travel, you continued. And when you died, everybody will blame you. That one is on that. Now, on the prescription of a uh, IPOB, I want to also use this medium to correct you, 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 you media people, because we will begin to take legal action against you people when you call when you call IPOB an upload or prescribed IPOB. IPOB's prescription is being challenged, and once it's been challenged, you dare not call IPOB a prescription uh, a prescribed organization. I am also using the case of Mars Nandekalo and Federal Government of Nigeria because when Nandekalo was ordered for his release, nobody released him. Nobody released him. So Federal Government held on him until they file their, uh, their notice of uh, appeal. So it's been challenged. And I also enjoy you people. We have been able to raise it in black and white for you people so that it will be easy for you. IPOB is an organization registered there in Germany, registered there in almost all the whole countries in Europe, in America, and Asia, with uh, people that are responsible. I'm talking about professors, I'm talking about Reverend Fathers, Reverend Pastors, I'm talking about Captain of, of Industries that are members. And IPOB has its own um, aims and objectives. It's in black and white. What they are looking for is there. IPOB paid their dues. IPOB, they, they, have, they have their meetings. 
Anytime they are going to have their meetings in all these countries, they normally apply, and federal government normally provides security for them, and they have their minutes. So that, that, that I mean, uh, uh, some persons are using the name of IPOB to commit crime, to commit terrorism, does not mean that IPOB is a terrorist organization. What do I mean? I'm a member of Nigerian Bar Association. If I use the name of Nigerian Bar Association to go and commit act of terrorism, that does not mean Nigerian Bar Association a terrorist organization. In fact, for your information, if the NBA president, Yc Mekau, who is the NBA president, number one lawyer in Nigeria, use the name of the, our organization to go and commit a terrorism organization, that does not make I, uh, NBA a terrorist organization. What makes you a terrorist organization is your aims and objective. That you refuse to register IPOB in Nigeria because of your personal animosity is not a grant for you to look at an association that is um, uh, registered in a country that is more responsible than this country. And you call, you call it a, a terrorist organization. So you people have to be very careful because those of them in diaspora that are members of IPOB, they may take you on on that. Finally, when uh, um, uh, Aplo, um, uh, the immediate past president, came into power to destroy this country, of course, everybody knew that Buhari never come to rule the country. He came to fight. And when Jonathan discovered that he came to fight, he left power for him, and he misused that power. He never, be, he never obeyed God's order, orders. And we now take it from him that because of his mentality, because of his military background, now that we have a Democrat, I'm talking about President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who is a Democrat, I work with him as a student during Nadeko, when my uncle, Professor Edward Edward Oproji, was there. And we worked together. So we felt that as a Democrat he is, he's supposed to reveal all the atrocities that is being committed by uh, uh, President Mohammed uh, Mohammed Buhari. Then, now, instead of him going by his renewed hope agenda to reveal all this and said, no, when you are calling an organization that is not a terrorist organization, a terrorist organization in your country, you are destroying the country. And that was the, one of the worst um, um, uh, acts and the decisions um, uh, taken by Buhari and the uh, Attorney General of the Federation, Malami the worst SAN I have ever seen in, in, in the whole world. Now, that you don't declare somebody, a, an organization in your own country, a terrorist organization, you are now implicitly telling people that you, ha, you, are, you, you are a terrorist country. And the people should not come to invest. Nobody would like to come and invest in a terrorist country. If they ask you to go and invest in Afghanistan, or it's, you will not go. And they are simply because they want to climb down IPOB. And the procedure for declaring an organization, a terrorist organization, have been provided. You did not declare um, um, uh, 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 Mieti Ala, uh, uh, Hesman, you did not declare them terrorists. See, now, an um, IPOB that you know that never carried arms. IPOB that know that they are following everything procedurally, you now declared. So it is not late. We are, people have been uh, uh, asking, what is the president doing? Mr. Uh, president, uh, of course, uh, I never believed in your administration based on your antecedent in Lagos as a governor. That's why I work against you. I voted against you. If opportunity for that it is office, I will still work against you. But now, it is, you still have an opportunity to amend your, your ways. Look at all those decisions. President Buhari took <coughs> in respect of this uh, Nandi Carlos matter and IPOB matter. Look at a way you can apply political solution. Of course, if all those things that gave rise to this particular agitation is being addressed, I don't think that there will be need for agitation. But as we have been going about lopsided appointments, taking decisions as if you are God, it will not solve that particular um, um, uh, issue. You arrested in Nandekalo, and somebody is somewhere also agitating. I'm talking about Simon Eber. You have now declared him wanted. Have you arrested him? 
What is what did the, the Finnish government told you when you asked them to the, to repatriate him? So these are the issues you need to cool down and seek advice. The people that meant well for you, not all those people that are moving around you trying to pick one or two things. It will help you. Now, having said that, we are we are calling you, gentlemen of the press, and uh, uh, ask uh, uh, the federal government to comply with the order and we're also calling the judge um, uh, many people have said it that uh, your conduct in the court that day shows that uh, you are the, ju the judgment the ruling you gave that day is not from you uh, that i'm talking about that half page ruling you gave that and dismissed all the whole applications you should also reconsider the judicial affairs you can reconsider rule of law rule of law first and for us to go move forge, forge ahead tell, uh, tell him, mr president you have seen how a, somebody that was um, arrested, I'm talking about was an, uh, Wadume, was arrested and he was released. We are talking about to uh, name them, Kabiru Soko, them, name all, a lot of them that were released, not to talk about somebody that is fighting for the right of his people, simply because you feel that he's an evil and you, th you think that you can intimidate him. No, nobody intimidates anybody. Because after it is, after four years or eight years, as, as the case may be, you will leave, another person will come. So try and do something so that you have, you write your uh, name in the Guinness Book, Guinness Book of uh, Record. Thank you, gentlemen. Part of the story is that at the next adjourned date on 17th April, the cat cannot, before, cannot come before the horse. The horse must come before the cat. And what is the horse? Fair hearing. And the cat is the accelerated hearing. You cannot have any criminal trial without fair hearing. That is the point we are trying to make. And this message is being sent loud and clear to the Federal Republic of Nigeria and to the Nigerian judiciary. Thank you very much for coming, and you have a nice day. Thank you that as we speak to you now, we have not been able to have a conference with, uh, with our clients. That one is one. As a lawyer, my rules uh, instructed me that for me to enter into a matter, I must have adequate conference with my client in line with the charges. And my client, while having that conference with him, I will make sure that my client is mentally stable and calm for him to tell me the area to go and for me to advise him accordingly. That, never, they, we never have had that opportunity. The reason is being that the prosecutor, the DSSS, one is frustrating our effort to that effect so that they can um, uh, prove their matter without being challenged and then uh, will be convicted. And we are saying that if and the color, that opportunity was not given in the color. How the opportunity be given to him? Send him to Kujia Correctional Center. We have our reasons. You have the reasons to keep him in a, in a DSSS. Yeah. The reason that only you know. But we have our reasons. We are you, the court, has even confirmed that what you are saying is true. But going by the case of DSSS and Maxwell Opera. And we are now telling you that we, uh, we cannot, either you transfer him to Kujia Correctional Center or you release him on bail. That's, then you reinstated his bail as directed by, by the Supreme Court, or you send him to a, pri uh, a private right. house for house arrest. And I gave instances, I said government house, you must say government house, and you said government house, any place that is, you are decent, or liaison offices, or alternatively, because the judge can do anything under section 6. You can uh, re uh, remind him in, his, in your house. <laughs> What we, are, what, we are, what we need is a place that will be free. He will look around. He will not be uh, afraid of saying anything. He will be free to give us whatever thing. Because where you said A, and you say, is it true that you do this one? He said yes. You said, okay, we are not going to defend you on this one. You can plead guilty on this. I don't know whether you're getting what I'm saying. If, so we'll be able to advise him. That we have not done. And I'm telling you that if by the next adjoint date our applications are in and the they, 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 they work with the prosecution and refuse that application. I said, I, I don't know of others, cannot 
go into that trial because it is against the rules of my professional ethics. Because if anything happened, I'll be held liable because you are not pre prepared for trial and you put your uh, uh, client on a trial. And I gave you instances, you are a driver. I will speak uh, briefly on the issue of the rendition of Mazen Namdekano from Kenya to Nigeria. We are all aware that uh, Mazen Namdekano, after the attack on him by the military of the Nigerian government, had to flee Nigeria for his life to Kenya. Unfortunately, in that attack in his hometown at Afaruku, so many people were murdered by the Nigerian military. Not less than 28 persons died on that particular day in the hands of the Nigerian military. And these are young men and women who had no arms on them, who were in a private compound of the late chief of Afaruku. After the attack on uh, the property, killing people, the occupants, including Mazen Namdekano, his parents, that's the traditional ruler of Afaruku and their wife, had to flee, amongst other persons that managed to escape. But like we are saying, 28 persons died on that particular day. After that day, so many other people died, including the parents of Mazen Namdekano. And this is as a result of the injuries, the shock that was inflicted on them by the Nigerian military that attacked the compound of Mazen Namdekano. And the Supreme Court in its judgment of 15 December 2023 has confirmed this position. That Mazen Namdekano's escape was not an escape from justice, but rather was a natural action taken by a human being who is aware that his life is imminently in danger. He had to run away to save his life so as to be able to stand his trial in our courts. Mazen Namdekano was eventually kidnapped from Kenya and brought back to Nigeria against every known law, both locally and internationally. They also showed very grave disrespect to the Kenyan authority and to the nation of Kenya. Unfortunately, the Kenyan government appear to be docile about the breach of their territorial integrity by the security agencies of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, who came into their country and kidnapped Mazen Namdekano. We strongly believe, just as the Supreme Court has also upheld, that what transpired in Kenya was an international crime. It is not just a civil matter, it is a criminal matter committed by the Federal Republic of Nigeria using its agents and agencies. The federal government or the Federal Republic of Nigeria, if it was a human being like myself and my colleagues here, ought by now to be in prison. Nigeria as a country, if Nigeria was a human being, ought by now to be detained in a very, very strong maximum security prison for committing the crime of kidnap. They are nothing less than Shekarao of the infamous Boko Haram. They are nothing less than the bandits that everybody is crying of today. The crime of kidnap is a heinous crime. It's a terrible crime. It's an uncivilized crime that ought not to be found within the shores of this country. But unfortunately, the federal government of Nigeria has participated in, in this crime of kidnap. 
Of course, we all know that the federal government of Nigeria attempted this uh, kind of crime uh, with Umoru Diko. It failed, and they got punished for it. The perpetrators were sent to prison in England. Nigeria as a nation was also penalized by the Commonwealth, suspended from every Commonwealth activity. This is what we expect should happen to the Federal Republic of Nigeria today. It is our strong belief that those agents who were sent to carry out this infamous and inglorious mission ought by now to have been brought in, interrogated, and sent to, uh, to, to the Ministry of Justice for prosecution. But unfortunately, we are asking the federal government that perpetrated it, that engineered it, to prosecute its own agents that it sent on this mission. Federal government of Nigeria sent people to Kenya to commit a crime of kidnap. They carried it out. Those individuals who committed this crime by now should be arrested and brought to book. Nigeria, like I said before, as far as we are concerned, until they purge themselves of this crime remains a criminal country. It is unfortunate, it is our country, but that is the position. Until Nigeria purges itself of this crime of kidnap that it has committed against Mazen Namdi Kano, remains a criminal country and ought to be dealt with in that fashion. Mazen Namdi Kano committed no crime known to any law just because he's asking for self-determination for his people which is supported by the African, African Charter, is supported by the United Nations Charter also on human and people's rights. It is supported by our constitution. For this reason, he is being persecuted, not persecuted. For the federal government of Nigeria to have kept him in detention in a solitary confinement for three years is persecution. There is no law supporting this impunity. There is no law supporting this illegality. There is no law supporting this breach of our constitution. If somebody has committed a crime, according to our Administration of Criminal Justices Act, Section 169, such a person should be detained in a prison if you must detain the person. But in this case, no crime has been committed. No antagonistic move has been made against the Constitution. Every action taken by Mazen Nandekano has the benefit of, the constitu of constitutional protection. Self-determination, calling for self-determination is not a crime. Asking for a referendum to determine whether this nation called Nigeria or this political arrangement called Nigeria should stand or not is a matter of his belief, something that ought to be discussed and agreed upon. Nigeria was amalgamated in 1914 under Lord Lugard. And under the influence of a romantic relationship, the name Nigeria was ascribed to this part of the country or this part of the world. Our fathers, our ancestors did not agree to an amalgamation in the first place. Our ancestors did not agree to being named Nigeria. Our ancestors did not agree to surrendering their individual and community sovereignty. But this was obtained under the barriers of the machine gun and possibly under the influence of alcohol by Lord Lugard and his girlfriend. And today we are all suffering that consequence. We are all suffering that false unity. 
we are all suffering these political uh, arrangements. We also all know and we also all agree that in Nigeria, this country today does not have a valid constitution that you can rely or call a constitution. The people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as we are called, or as we are being forced to bear, had never met one day to agree to have a constitution. So the preamble of the 1999 constitution is based on falsity, based on lies that we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, has given unto ourselves a constitution. We did not give to ourselves any constitution. The constitution is an extension of a decree of the military juntas that was in power at the time in question. It is not the intention of the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, as we have been forced to bear, to have that document as our constitution. But because we cannot continue to operate in a vacuum, we are managing it. And even in managing it, the federal government today has consistently refused to respect and obey its constitution, or I would say its so-called constitution. The Federal Republic of Nigeria, as far as we understand it and as far as we are concerned, does not have a binding law that holds us together. The arrangement is a military arrangement in all ramifications. Lord Lugard came with his machine guns to hold us together. The military came with their machine guns and bombs to force us to swallow a constitution, a document called constitution. So until the people of Nigeria come together to decide whether they want to remain a nation, we cannot say that we have a nation. Now, some will say it is the National Assembly that has the powers to determine such. We beg to disagree on this. The National Assembly does not have the power because in the first place, the constitution, the constitution of the National Assembly is made from the false document called the 1999 Constitution. You cannot place something on nothing and expect it to stand. You cannot put, uh, you cannot build a mansion on lies. The people of, the, of Nigeria today did not sit at any time to have a constitution, a decree a military decree was made and we are forced to take it and adopt it and accept it as our constitution. But ordinarily, I was not represented. People from my community were never represented in that constitution making process. And I'm sure even members know flex the common position of all the lawyers here. The position of the MNK legal team. This legal team is not going to be part of the travesty of justice that is being cooked in the pot. If Mazin Nam the Kano is not going to get a fair trial, this legal team is not going to be part of murdering justice in a Nigerian court over the head of Mazin Nam the Kano. It does not mean we are going to abandon Mazin and the Khan, but we, are, we will, as a group, as a team, abandon a process. We will refuse to be participants in a process that is geared to pre program the injustice on the head of Mazin and the Khan. Let that be clear. So it does not sound like we are going to boycott Mazin and the Khan. No. If you want to say we shall boycott the judiciary, you can use that, but what we are boycotting will be manifest injustice, injustice. So and lack of fair trial. Can go ahead and convict him without being, being if you have one more question, you ask so that.